All right, and welcome back to my Dark Souls 1 Soul Level 1 guided walkthrough using the Remastered Edition. And we're on the way down the catacombs again, this time to acquire Grave Lord's Nido's Lord Soul. And fortunately, this time there's an easier method for uh, making our way down the catacombs. Better said, it can probably be considered an unintentional shortcut. If you position yourself exactly here on the bridge, you can safely jump down and immediately roll to the platform beneath the second bridge. Fall damage is based on percentages, so you can be sure to survive this fall. As long as you have full life, that is. Now it is crucial to not hesitate after the first drop, because if you have some bad luck, you can land right next to an exploding skeleton head. So that's why you need to roll immediately further down. And then you'll need a bit of luck when it comes to the bone wheel skeletons. Because god fucking damn it are those a bunch of dicks. I have actually never tried this, but I suppose that if you drop an alluring skull in the opposite direction, you can actually prevent the bone wheel skeletons from following you. But I didn't have any of those in my inventory, as far as I'm aware. But my guess is that it would work. Regarding pinwheel, there is nothing to say. It's practically just as easy as on a regular playthrough. As long as you're fast enough, you can kill him before you even have to worry about any of his attacks. Okay, the Tomb of the Giants is a really annoying location, but there is actually a quick way to get down to the next bonfire. As I said in part 1, I did a little practice run for this, but regardless I was a bit hesitant. If you look at speedrunners, you can see that this can be done in essentially one fluid motion. Basically it goes like this. Move along with the lights, and when you get to the red one, move right. Then drop down where you see the eyes of the skeleton below, and of course be ready to dodge its attacks. And that's where I almost fucked up. And then you can slide down to the right. And then immediately to your left you will find the bonfire. Alright, the next part I didn't practice. And I'm going through it without a light. Which is actually pretty stupid because the skull lantern can be found in the pit past patches. Or what would have been better is to get the sunlight maggot in Isolith. Because that one you can wear on your hat so you don't have to sacrifice the use of a shield. Moreover, we are going to need a light later on in the DLC. Okay, so that's the wrong way. Yeah, let's try that again. The right road is actually pretty simple, but I'm simply a bit rusty. Basically, you need to constantly stick to the right wall, dodge two skeletons and drop down twice, and then you need to turn around until you see a ladder down. And if you turn right after that, you will already be where it's light again. Okay then, Grave Lord Nido. This fight is a bit like Capra Demon in the sense that the actual boss is the extra enemies inside the boss arena. Nido himself is really easy. So here we are going to use our divine weapon because we want the skeletons to stay dead. I'm also equipping Havel's armor mainly for the poise so I won't get staggered by the skeletons so that I can dispose of them quickly. In New Game Plus however you will pretty much need to lure the skeletons away and backstab them one by one. Which is a pain in the dick. But on new game, Hevel's armor will make it a lot easier. However, you need to heal immediately after dropping down into the boss arena. And it's a matter of RNG, whether or not, and when, Nido will do the toxic sword attack that uh, comes out of the ground. 
which you pretty much cannot dodge when wearing Hevel's armor. So make sure to have Moss ready to cure the toxic. Fortunately the sword itself will not be a one hit kill, so as long as you have full life it's manageable. After the skeletons are dead, Nido himself is very easy. The only dangerous attack is his AoE attack, but you can easily block that with your crest shield, taking minimal damage. Nido is weaker to fire than he is to lightning. And the final thing to be aware of is that there are two large skeletons in the back of the room, so stay near the front of the room so you won't aggro them. You definitely don't want to deal with them too. Alright then, only one more Lord Soul left to go. So let's head to the Duke's archive and I will show you a very quick way to get through it. Don't try to dodge this boar's attacks, he will simply move along with you. So instead just run backwards until he stops. You can then easily attack him because he is designed to move back to his starting point. Alright, in this section there is actually a way to skip the first encounter with Sief, which even from software themselves weren't aware of. Commonly used by speedrunners and in fact the only way to do an actual no death run. It will take some practice, but it will automatically position you in the right place to access the shortcut you need to unlock after reaching the bonfire after escaping from the prison.
Okay, so this is how to do it. Activate the lift again so it will go down. Then run to this wooden area and then drop down on the edge of the elevator. Then quickly reposition yourself like this and roll down onto the second floor from the top. Again, this will require some practice. However, good thing is that if you fail and fall down, you can probably do a safe quit before you actually hit the ground, meaning that you can immediately try again. And as I said, you have immediate access to where the next shortcut is. You don't even have to bother with changing the direction of the stairs. Alright, so now we can just immediately make our way to the next boss fight. Now, something I didn't do but is actually advisable is to make sure that you take enough fall damage before getting to Sieve to get into Red Tearstone range. Because that way you can take him down so quickly that he will practically have no time to even do anything. Regardless, as you will see, even without Red Tearstone Ring, he won't be that much of a problem. Alright, first do a safe quit. The reason for this is that one of those clams could have followed you into the boss room. So if you do a safe quit, the fog wall will be up, so that there will be no extra enemies to worry about. You can actually first destroy the crystal before doing a safe quit, because it only resets if you die. However, when you destroy the crystal, Sieve will be stunned for a while, meaning that if you time it correctly, you can do a lot of damage before he even has the chance to counterattack. And as should be clear from the Dark Souls lore, Dragons are weak to lightning, so use a lightning weapon. Once you see that he is no longer stunned, move to his side because he will likely start off doing his crystal breath. A good strategy is to follow his tail around, because then he will constantly be trying to face in your direction meaning there is less chance of him initiating any attacks. Although you do have to watch out for when he raises his tail, because then he will smack all of his tails around, meaning you need to quickly run out of his reach. Make sure to be aggressive in this fight, because he can also turn half the arena into crystals, and that can be hard to avoid. So it's best if you make the fight last as short as possible. Again, Red Tearstone Ring is therefore very effective in this fight, because if I had done that, the fight would probably already have been over right after his first attack. Alright, when it comes to the main game, only Gwyn is left, so you could end the game already. However, for the sake of completion, I am going to include the DLC. So that's where we'll be going in the next episode.